fact, grounding does not protect against electric shock. Shock. Here's some examples. I was involved in this case. Soldier electrocuted in Iraq was, neglig was ne ne negligent. Homicide, Army concludes. And I'm not going to tell you the whole story, but I was involved in this. Here's a Green Beret soldier. He's taking a shower in a barracks. He goes out and kills the bad guys, comes back, taking that. There were 16 of these guys, not all Green Berets, over Afghanistan and Iraq. You know what happened? They have these metal buildings. They have these showers. They have the metal water piping systems. They have a motor that runs the water pump inside there. There was a fault in the water pump. The feeder cable that came to the building was a, it's a you know, European kind of cable. It has, a, a, like a, it has an outer braid, and that was the effective ground fault current path. But when they build these buildings so fast, and the contractors who are not electrical people, probably wouldn't matter anyhow, they made a connection, and the, the braiding of the cable did not connect to the connector to the equipment. So then when there was a fault to the water pipe motor, it energized the entire building, including the water piping system, but there was no way for the fault current return. So now I'm involved in this case because the president of KBR, the company, called me this whole deal. I spoke to the engineers in Iraq. You know what the solutions were? Drive ground rides at the buildings. Oh, jeez. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, no. And I'm going around and around and around in a circle. And then I, I do get upset. You guys, the video stream guys saw me. You, you, you start killing somebody, it really, really, really bothers me. You think after what I just covered an hour or so that you're thinking you're going to drive a ground rod and make it safe. I go nuts. I go nuts on this engineer. I said, listen, here's what you got to do. You don't go out to like 20,000 buildings or 10,000 buildings and drive ground rods all over the place. You have to clear the fault. No, no, no. The electrons go to ground. It's a path. I said, listen, go drive a ground rod. Take your circuit conductor to it. Turn it on. Put an amp meter on there. Take volt meter. Measure the ground to understand you don't clear a fault. So, no. <clears throat> Let's go to the next graphic. Unlicensed electrician admits regrets in boys' electrocution. I was involved in this case also in Miami. A young boy goes into a, a, a bus shelter. There's a 120-volt circuit, little lights, you know, th things like that. He gets killed. They found out the ground rod that was driven for the service on this little tiny building was a four-foot ground rod. And they're all like, oh, there's the problem. I said, whoa, no, that's not the problem. The, the ground had nothing to do with killing the boy. What happened was... At the transformer, which we'll see when we get in the transformers, there was a jumper that was missing. In other words, you have to have current travel back to the XO terminal. That little jumper was missing. So when there was a fault, it energized the bus bench. He sat on the bus bench. He took off his shoes. He sat down, put his feet on the ground, and he got electrocuted. It had nothing to do with grounding. Take a look at this other one, Jordan. Man electrocuted at tennis courts. Ryan, tell us a little bit about just your feelings about this, this case here. Uh, well... You know, this happened in uh, 1989. I, I actually had never heard of this until uh, until yesterday, when uh, I, I was looking, you know, preparing for today's work, and I, I saw the heading of this: W. Jordan man electrocuted, and I and I just froze, and I said, I wonder if that's West Jordan. And I started reading West Jordan. Yeah, West Jordan. Well, uh, I was born and raised in West Jordan, Utah. This is where I spent the first uh, 25 years of my life was in West Jordan. So. Uh, you know, as an instructor, and Mike, I'm sure you can say this, you, I tell people all the time, man, people touch uh, traffic signals and they die. People touch manhole covers and they die. But that's in Vegas and that's in New York. Okay, well, this was in a little town in Utah. You know, th this happens everywhere. And you search hard enough. I mean, it can't have taken you very long to find all these stats because it, it, it happens. This isn't Twilight Zone stuff. All I did these was things real quick, happen. I did real quick. I searched for electrocution. I said Miami. Boom. That was the case I was involved in. I searched for electrocution, uh, Iraq. Boom. That was the case I was involved in. I said, and then, you know, it brings up all the way. And I just pick it, pick it, pick it. So I pick a couple of them in there. So there was no intention to be with your right. home place was. But the important thing was this was a fence. Here was a case where there was a fault and then it was a fence. Grounding, you know what happens when they get fences like this and there's a big deal? They want to drive ground rides at fences. I'm like, the fence is already grounded. Just in the dirt. Here's another one. Boy electrocuted and climbing a school fence. Here's another one. Firefighters, Jody Lane. Electrocution. I was involved in that case. 